Hey, my name is Marco. I'm a former pro opera singer turned voice actor. Today we're going to be listening to StarCraft II, the Wings of Liberty main theme. I don't know very much about StarCraft II. In fact, I haven't spent any time at all with StarCraft II. I know that it's a beloved game. I know it's an important game to a generation of people, but this is a, a game that for whatever reason, I maybe because I didn't have a PC or, or my PC was always behind, I, I didn't ever, never got the chance to play it. So I'm really curious to listen to this and to dive in and to listen to it. So let's just go right for it. It sort of pivots our expectations because when I first heard it, I was thinking actually of Also Sprach Zarathustra from uh, by Richard Strauss. Now I'm hearing this guitar and I'm hearing this intense sound, and I'm I'm curious to see where we go. It's really twisting and turning. I mean, the the thing is, this this has that that space sound, and I think it's pretty interesting. Bum bum. You have the horns and the the brass in the back, kind of laying in space music. Has a very specific sound, and it, and it ha we we you hear the galaxy in this music. You hear you hear the darkness of space. You see the stars twinkling because of this music, and all it's doing is we've barely even do dove into it, but you hear that with this sort of this twinkling of the of the of the uh, percussion there, the triangle or whatever instrument that was, or the or the glockenspiel or whatever. You you hear this twinkling sound of the stars, but you also hear this this tension. This sounds like a true fanfare. Anytime you get horns like this, this is shouting it to the rooftops. This is heroes coming to save the day. You hear some in, in this section right now, you heard some some loss, some concern, some worry. That fanfare is is shelter, it's rescue, it's it's safety, it's it's being supported. And uh, it really comes through. Bum, 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 bum. This is to get our blood pumping. This is the coming of safety. This is the arrival of support. This is strength. This is unity. This is bonding together in the face of adversity. And there's another shift right there. We have this very bombastic, I picture like space marines and fighting a battle and being face to face with their enemy and feels like a, an, a national anthem in a lot of ways. It reminds me a lot of uh, a little bit of Mars from Holst the Planets.
I feel like it's an unwritten rule that every time there is some sort of space music involved, the horn has to come in because the, I mean, isn't, isn't the, the force theme, do, 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 that's French horn. So I find it kind of interesting that we've now added this and it, it, it really does have this very like Star Warsian sound to this where it, it, this I, I picture us being on a planet and looking up at the night sky and thinking about wanting to go up and fight in the battle or hoping that someone you love that's out there fighting for the universe and you're reflecting on them and your memories and there's a lot of calm in, in this instrumentation with the strings and you've got the clarinet and you have the, obviously this horn that's leading us and it's just this feeling of hope and of strength. So many shifts. I think it's really interesting that this is happening in the main theme. You know, this is something, it's kind of interesting because in musicals, when musicals end, the end credits, when, when people, the bow music, it's usually a recap of all the music that's come before uh, throughout the musical. And we highlight each of the individual scenes. Sometimes uh, characters even bow to their music that maybe we heard earlier on where they sang a solo or something. And then they they the composer then takes that music and turns it into an orchestration bit so that you know the character comes out when they take their bow and it's their music um but in this it, being that it's a main theme i feel like this is really uh telling a story and guiding us through the beats that are going to occur in the game um you know it, it really it really tells a story of fortitude and of of courage and and, and willingness to put your life on the line or a willingness to be courageous and and uh and present to what's happening <laughs> I mean, did you hear that? It feels like a rocket ship is taking off. I mean, do you hear this space battle and and this slapping of ah, see this is tension bum 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 in the in the brass this is all just this is just such tightened tension This is like coming face to face with the leader of the army that you're f trying to save the human race against. You know, this is this is coming up to face with the big bad. <laughs> So many twists and turns here.
This is insane. This is an extremely common thing to do in, in orchestral works. Let's say it's the, the Duraflay Requiem, because that's just what's what came to mind. There is a mezzo-soprano soloist in that, that also then has a choral backing. And this happens all the time in symphonic works where there's a, a chorus and, and there's a soprano, a soloist. And usually what will happen is the soloist sings over top and then the choral chorus is there to support them. It also happens in opera, for instance, in uh, Tosca and the Te Deum, which actually is a huge choral number, but it's also Scarpia, the chief of police's first main aria. Tosca mi fai dimenticare di avetero. Scarpia sings over top of the chorus, even though they're singing in unison. Scarpia is who we should be hearing first and foremost because he actually is the soloist. But the chorus is there not only to tell their own story, but to back him up. So in a lot of ways, that last section we just listened to it sort of reminds me of that. This is so many different musical concepts all in one. Why do we have a piano there? That is essentially a piano concerto. We have the piano start off and then we have the orchestra fill in and replaces the piano. That's standard piano piano concerto beginnings. Piano starts off, orchestra follows, then we go back to the piano. In this case, now we've pivoted back into a fanfare. <laughs> And this is the main theme, and I think we heard this in the beginning. This has been a very long piece, but pretty sure we heard this in the beginning. But this is actually the crux of this entire composition. This is really what the crux of this game is all about. And there are these probably these other moments inside of StarCraft II in this in this Wings of Liberty gameplay, but this is what we should expect the most. Crazy. StarCraft II Wings of Liberty came out in 2010. This is, is such a legitimate piece of classical music that is, it's, it's here. This can play in a symphony. There's no reason this can't exist in a world where we're also featuring whole the planets. This can be programmed in the same program. I've never seen StarCraft II be programmed in a space-themed concert. Now I understand that there are pops orchestras that specifically do Star Wars night, Star Trek, where you watch an episode and the music behind is played by the orchestra. People love that stuff. People go nuts for that. But how come this can't be programmed in a pops concert a and B, why can't this be programmed in a classical music concert where you're also featuring Hulse the Planets? It's the same thing. This sounds like Hulse Mar. I mean, listen. Listen, this sounds like Star Wars. Listen to this buildup of tension.
You see the spaceship entering the port. How is this any different from what we just listened to? I mean, you can't say that hosts the planets didn't have some sort of influence on, uh, you know, the music of StarCraft II uh, or Star Wars or any other space theme. I mean, the thing is like this sound, you hear space when you listen to this music and that is a prime example. The StarCraft Wings of Liberty main theme is a perfect example. There are so many scenarios that this music is all there to paint a picture with your mind so that you go into the gameplay and think, oh, you picked up the game StarCraft. You understand that it's about space. But this music allows us to fully encapsulate ourselves mentally, emotionally, physically into the world. And that is the, the intention of this music. And uh, so it's crazy that Holst the Planets was written in 1916 and StarCraft II's Wings of Liberty main theme was made in 2010. That's almost 100 years. Why is the planets being programmed in symphony halls and StarCraft II Wings of Liberty not? Why? And that is the point of this channel. We're talking about game music. Yes, it's fun. We enjoy talking about game music. We enjoy listening to game music. We enjoy watching a gameplay that features video game music. What's the difference between the planets and StarCraft II Wings of Liberty main theme? I don't see one besides the years that they were written. Things to think about. Anyway, as always, thank you. Feel free to check out the links in the about section. There's never any pressure, of course. Feel free to join the Discord. And as always, thank you so much. And I'll talk to you later.